Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday and today I'm going for a canvas. The size that I'm working on is an 8x8 and I do get so many comments asking me to share more ideas with my collection. So with my collection I have shared tons of ideas and I keep on sharing. I do a lot of those mini journals and uh, sometimes you don't pay so much attention to them but trust me these are great chunks of inspiration that you can easily turn into a bigger journal if you like, like on a two page uh, idea. All you need to do is to just use bigger images and pretty much the same techniques for the background. So you will find all of those projects that I'm showing you here on my shorts or if you are here on YouTube or if you are uh, following me on my Instagram account you will find those techniques there as well. So you can see here this one could be definitely a tag and you can see here it's same idea I have the girl on top of the background this one could be definitely a card and here is the card that I'm talking about. So what I'm doing is sharing lots of inspiration on that mini size that you can easily turn into a tag into a card, into a bigger journal, into a mixed media project like an album for example. So uh, these are a couple of uh, uh, projects that I did um, the last two days where I'm showing you the splatter technique, super fun. So anyway, I just wanted to share that uh, just because I'm sharing on a smaller scale doesn't mean that you cannot turn this idea into something bigger. Now let me explain what I'm going to do on this canvas first and then I will go back and talk a little bit more about those mini journals that I share. So I will be using one of the rice papers from my Secret Diary collection and this was designed so that it's going to give you a lovely background with no effort at all. You are going to find different textures, uh, stamping, even some images that are embedded in the text and uh, you even going to find splatters there. So I made sure that um, you have everything for a background and all you need to do if you want to have a quick project is to just stick a focal point on top. So anyway I'm going to show you how you can play with it and create something completely different but having this rice paper as a start. So I am applying some rice paper glue I'm going to place my rice paper on top and then once that's done and it's stuck down nicely I will make sure that I apply a layer of this rice paper glue on top of it. I like to do that because it is sealing down the paper so no matter what I do on top of it it's, no, it's going to be nicely secured there. Now I like to use a big brush for that it makes my job really quick and easy. And as you can see I like to apply rice paper glue only at the top part, make sure that I have uh, grabbed the rice paper with that glue and then I can uh, work my way all the way down. I need to make sure that I have stuck down the rice paper on the edges very well and once you apply that top layer let it dry, it dries really quickly or just use your heat gun. I did use the heat gun for this step. And then you can use your scissors to cut out the excess paper or you can definitely use a file which is going to give you a lovely a texture on the edges. Now tissue paper or rice paper are a great way to add something interesting on your background. This way you are going to break that blank space and you can uh, have something to start with. Now what I'm doing here is just spraying with water all over my canvas so that it is nice and wet and I'm going to use my brush and apply some primer. You can do that either with primer or with uh, gesso or even uh, thin down acrylic paint. Uh, don't worry too much about what I'm doing here, it's not going to show like that at the end. The idea is to somehow push back the color so that it looks as actually it is a background and not overwhelm whatever I'm going to stick on top. So what you can do now is to bring in a clean paper towel or a baby wipe and wipe off some areas that you want them to be more vibrant on your background. 
make sure that when you apply that layer, you have lots of water down on your project or your brush is loaded with water so that you don't um, actually cover up everything, but you are just doing a light wash of white. It's a great way to knock down those uh, vibrant colors and I'm going to bring in the original uh, rice paper so you can see the difference. Just a little more faded, which means that whatever focal point I decide to stick on top, it's going to uh, look nice and pop on top of it. Now let's make this background our own. I know that you have already something to start with and you can definitely leave it as it is. However, that's not me. I always like to add my own touch on it. And I'm starting with that baby blue. I use a color that is already there on my background, so it's going to match nicely. I'm working with a brush that is flat and it's not wet at all. It's completely dry. This is going to allow for some brush strokes to show on top of my background. Another technique that I absolutely love doing on my backgrounds is stenciling with volume paste. You can use any paste that you like. I go with volume paste and uh, the one in my jar is a little bit dry, but no worries at all. It's going to work just fine. Actually, the thicker the paste, the better. It's going to uh, help you get that beautiful uh, design of a stencil. So this is again a stencil from my latest collection, Secret Diary, and I made sure that in this design, I end up with um, big words that um, I absolutely love. So you will find inspiration, create, life, travel, all words that I picked specifically for this stencil. And it is that joy of creating your very own stencils and making them exactly as you want them to be. And hopefully other people like you are going to love them as well. So I'm transferring that design on my background with white and it is going to keep uh, that quite subtle, uh, the background I mean, but at the same time it's going to add some texture on the background. Now in my latest mixed media videos I make sure that I don't speed up the process at all. So you see the speed that I'm actually working on. I'm not fast at all. I'm thinking as I'm moving on and I'm mainly going to transfer that uh, design where those blue areas are, where I applied that uh, those brush strokes. This is going to help that uh, white pop even more while keeping everything quite subtle obviously. Now I'm going to bring it closer to the camera and hopefully you can see what is going on here. And again, you can leave it aside to dry or just use your heat can. Volume paste dries really quickly, like in five minutes. And then I'm going to ink up the edges. I'm starting with coffee from my dye ink collection. I am going to ink up the edges very lightly. You can see I just bring a little bit of brown, not overwhelming the project. This is going to create kind of a frame. And then since I added some brown on the edges, I'm going to uh, incorporate brown at the center of my project as well, just by adding some droplets. This is aqua color. You can use any um, way to splatter, any brown to splatter. I like aqua color because it um, is kind of shiny. It looks like watercolor, but it dries permanent, by the way. And again, I do have three colors in a set from uh, of aqua color that matches all the colors matches with my Secret Diary collection. So I'm making sure that all those droplets are dry and then I'm going to move on and work on the border again, this time with uh, shadow black ink and one of my stamps. So I picked one that has a lovely uh, texture and I designed that so that you can easily layer it. You can stamp this one on top of the other and I'm going to mainly stay on the border. I'm stamping everything with black ink. I'm going around the border. This is going to create again kind of a frame and then uh, I'm layering one on top of the other, as you can see. I'm not even using a stamping block because I don't want to end up with perfect um, impressions of this stamp. This was designed exactly for this uh, purpose, to create lovely backgrounds with no effort at all. I'm not going to do that technique all over the edges. I'm leaving some empty space just to make it look more interesting. 
and by not having a stamping block you end up with a more organic look plus you are able to stamp whichever part of that stamp you want. And then with the ink pad I'm just going to make sure that the far edge of my canvas is completely black. So I'm super happy with how the background is looking at the moment. Let's go ahead and start layering to create the focal points. This is a scrap piece of paper that I have. It is a leftover from another project that I did from the 12 by 12 secret diary uh, paper pad. I'm going to use some of those designs, which I will use to layer on top of my canvas. Now, when I create focal points, it's all about layering. I like to create clusters and you can use bits and pieces of the designs from the pattern papers to do that. When you cut out something with scissors, it's always nice to do this technique with the scissors, just to add more uh, texture on that design. And then, of course, I'm going to ink up the edges with coffee dye ink, just to make sure that when I layer one paper piece on top of another, they are going to pop against each other. Now, from this pattern paper, I'm going to cut out a few more elements. So you see there are, uh, you will find text, you will find uh, things that look like a washi tape, you will find a texture that looks like a corrugated cardstock. Just incorporate those into your project. Some of them are not going to show at the end, but I always like to work layer after layer and having fun when I'm working on that layer at the moment. So I don't really know where everything is going to fall later on. And I do get questions on why did you cut out this piece? It didn't show at all at the end. Well, I didn't know where I'm going to put the next layer. And sometimes when I'm playing with the different layers, I find that uh, they are more pleasing to the eye in a certain spot. And I have to sacrifice what is underneath. To tell you the truth, in my mind, everything still lives in that page, in that project, and I don't care if I cover it up. It's just a piece of paper after all. I know some people are not able to cover up a layer. If you are one of those, you need to make sure that you pre-plan everything so you have all the elements, audition them, and after you are happy with the full composition, then start sticking down everything. In my case, I just change my mind all the time, but sometimes I don't even audition. You see here, I just go ahead and stick everything down and later on, I will change my mind. Anyway, that's how my mind works. Now again, keep in mind what I'm creating today. It could definitely be a mixed media art journal, a double page journal. With all the techniques that I shared up to now, you could definitely uh, recreate that, just make the same background, etc. However, for those layers, as you can see, just because I can go dimensional on a canvas, I am using foam squares at the back, foam tape at the back. If you are recreating this project inside your journal, just make sure that you don't uh, use any foam tape because you don't want to have that bulk inside your book. So you see here, as I'm layering all my elements, I changed uh, my mind. I had to move all those layers in a different spot. And then I'm going to stick everything down. For both the girl and the typewriter, I did uh, use two layers of foam tape at the back to make them um, even more dimensional. And also both of these uh, cutouts are actually from the ephemera pack. So uh, they are stickers if you peel off the backing. However, I do want the dimension for this project. So I'm going with the foam tape. Of course, you can definitely uh, just peel it off and stick it down if you are working on inside the journal. And I'm doing a little bit of fuzzy cutting. Again, I'm using that scrap piece of paper and I'm going to separate that white flower. And there are many flowers in the collection pack that you can fuzzy cut. You will see I will end up with three or four here that I have cut out. I am very frugal with my paper. Uh, and that's just because I absolutely love every bit and piece of that collection. So I use again and again everything I have on hand. So after fuzzy cutting, here are all the white flowers that I was able to uh, end up with. I am inking up the very 
edge of those petals. I'm not overwhelming the flowers with uh, brown. I don't want uh, this project to end up uh, super vintage looking at the end. I want to have that fresh bluish look and feel. And then I'm just going to decide where everything is going to go and stick them down. Again, for these uh, layers, you can definitely go with glue, stick them down as they are, completely flat, or you can go with dimension by using some foam squares underneath. Now, uh, as I was talking about, um, for the small little journals that I post, the shorts or reels, whatever you call them, they are little chunks of inspiration. Lately, I'm super busy designing my new collections, and there are many new things that are coming out next week with Spellbinders and next month with Stamperia. So stay tuned about that. But just because my schedule is so uh, busy lately, it is really difficult for me to produce a full length video on YouTube like today, for example, because it's not the difficult part to create the project. The boring thing is to do the video editing and the voiceover. So anyway, I am still able to create little chunks of inspiration in the small journal, but always keep in mind that those little ideas are packed with techniques and compositions and inspiration, so you can definitely turn those into bigger projects. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments what you feel about those little chunks of inspiration. I still am going to do the big videos, but I am trying to give you daily inspiration or every other day with the smaller projects. So what I'm doing here is just trying to decide which of those quotes I'm going to use. I did design this page specifically for our journaling and you will find many quotes that are perfect for our journals and mixed media projects. So I decided to go with three of those in brown color because I feel like they're going to stand out against my background really nicely. So I'm going to tuck one of those phrases down here and then for the rest of them up on the top corner where I have some empty space. Again, for those layers of the phrases and the words, I did go with foam tape at the back so that I add dimension. Again, if you are working inside the journal to recreate this idea, just go completely flat. So for this project, I chose to go with imagination, simplicity, and craft your happiness. And of course, because I was having so much fun, I just didn't want to stop uh, here. So I'm bringing in my decorative chips. These are designs again from the same collection. And uh, I'm going to go with some of the leaves. I will uh, pop out some of them. These are laser cut and it is thick paper like chipboard, which I'm just going to stick as it is. I'm not going to color it. You can definitely do that. You can emboss, you can add some acrylic paint on it. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I find that it is uh, really pleasing to the eye and uh, it does have that ivory color that matches uh, great with my whole project. Again, remember this is a canvas, so I can go as dimensional as I like. I wouldn't uh, probably use those inside my journal. Although they are not so thick, they wouldn't add that much bulk inside the pages. Now, this is a canvas that I am creating as a tribute on this collection. And I make one of those canvases for every one of my collections. And they go up my wall. I will share on my Instagram my wall of art. And you will see at some point that this is going to be there as well. I did share it like um, once every couple of months. And people can see what is up there. And I think it is already here on YouTube as well. If you haven't seen it, just go ahead and browse through my shorts. You will find that wall. It is super fun. Anyway, I am happy with how that looks. Let me add those finishing touches now. This is my iridescent contour liner and I'm adding some dots in different parts of the project, mainly on the petals of the white flowers. And here you see I make a mess. Don't worry, it happens to everyone. Just wipe it off and go and start over again. The contour liner should be the very last step on your project. So do as I say and not as I do, because my mind sometimes works completely different. 
Now this is where I realized that I haven't used my white gel pen, so back again for the finishing touches and I'm adding some very light uh, sketchy lines along those quotes. I'm going to add some highlights on the typewriter and uh, then I will move on to add some white splatters, again one of my favorite finishing touches. Now on this step you may want to cover with some scraps of paper her face, you don't want any uh, weird splashes on top of her. But you see here I'm leaving on the edge without covering and everything worked out just fine. And then I'm thinking I'm done but I don't like something, I don't like a gap that is in between her legs and that typewriter. I feel like this composition isn't uh, connected, uh, let's say. So I went back and cut out one of those tickets from the collection and I'm just going to tuck it there. This way I feel like it kind of completes everything and everything is kind of uh, connected together. So I just tuck it in and then I'm going to add a dot of glue to hold it in place. And that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to always leave me a comment and like the video. Everything I used is linked down below, just like always in the description. You will find some close-up photos here where you can see all the details better. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.